Hey, in this tutorial we'll talk about the new and improved Sun and Sky system for V-Ray 5. We will discover how your scene should be set up for exterior lighting, discover ways on how to add atmospheric effects and use a little workaround to add clouds for a nicer overall result. So that right here is the scene that we're going to be using. You can see it's quite simple, just some terrain geometry. I have some kind of sci-fi buildings here in the midground to break up this terrain a little bit. And then here in the foreground there is this lake that should get some interesting reflections coming from the environment and from the buildings itself. And then if I render this, I will get this kind of result at the moment because I don't have any lighting set up in my scene at the moment. So there's some light coming from the buildings themselves because they use some V-Ray light material. But other than that, it's totally dark. And now we're gonna see how we can use the updated V-Ray Sun and Sky system to illuminate here our scene. So let's now add a V-Ray Sun in here. Let me first reframe this view a little bit and then choose this V-Ray Sun in here. If we add it, it will say, if we also would like to automatically add a V-Ray Sky in the environment map, normally you should choose yes, because V-Ray Sun and V-Ray Sky is meant to be used together. So normally you should choose yes. And then let me just reframe this a little bit, put it here, for example, and then we can make this view smaller again that we see better. And now let's start the rendering. So what we see now is that we have extremely bright result at first. And the reason for that is that the V-Ray Sun uses like physically accurate brightness values and your scene or most likely your camera is by default not really set up to work with these kind of physically accurate brightness values. So you would need to adjust that. So there are a couple of ways how you can address this problem. So first of all, you could, for example, choose the light itself here, the V-Ray Sun and choose a different intensity multiplier. But I think the better approach is to not mess with these intensity values here, but to leave them at where they are by default. And then just choose your camera here and make sure that the camera is correctly set up for an exterior scene. So at the moment, there is not even an exposure control here applied to the camera. So let me just apply here this exposure control. And then inside here, you can choose different kind of exposure values. So by default, I think the exposure value here is set to eight. And we can just choose some exposure value that suits a little bit more like some exterior lighting scene. So if you go higher, the scene will become darker. So for example, for some exterior lighting scene, maybe something around 15 would be much more appropriate. And now you can see everything looks now much better. So we can clearly see our environment. The only problem now is that here our windows, so from the buildings, they became totally black. And that's because now those kind of lights here are way too dark in order to show up in our final rendering. So we would need to adjust that. And I have here in the material editor, those materials for the building. So let me just multiply them. For example, here 500 for those lights here. And then for the windows, I will uh, choose here 250, for example. And now we can see that, okay, we have now our environment lighting here and it's not overexposed. And we also get back here our windows. And now we can start to continue working like this. Before we continue working on the scene, let's just only focus about the V-Ray Sun and Sky. And for this, let's just hide everything so that we only have the V-Ray Sun and Sky system in here. Let me first disable here lens effects so that we don't get confused by those. And also this layer right here. And then we see what we have here in terms of our V-Ray Sun and Sky. So let me select here the V-Ray Sun. And then there's a bunch of options that we can adjust for it. So in V-Ray 5, there's now this new sky model added, which is this improved one right here. So Let's switch to this one and then we see the colors are changing a little bit and this new sky model apparently has a much better transition here on the horizon. So for sunsets and sun raises. So let's now move it down a little bit. Let me increase the size of the sun, for example, to something like five so that we can see our sun better. And then we can see how this one now looks like basically. So I think it's, it's actually quite nice how the colors are here transitioning on the horizon and then the sun travels higher and higher and we get this bluish sky and so on. So let's also check out some of the other or older models in here. So if we now, for example, move down with this one, we can see it looks drastically different, maybe much less realistic than the other one I just showed you now. Then there's also those ones in here, um, which have been in there for a long time. And then this one as well, which I think color wise looks kind of similar, but maybe intensity wise is a little bit different than this improved one here. So yeah, I think the new improved one definitely is the go-to sky model that you should use from now on. And yeah, also in order to make the sun look nicer, you should also use the lens effect. So let me just switch those ones on again. 
and then you just get a much nicer or much more realistic result basically. All right, so let's now discover some more of those options in here. So what we saw already was here this intensity multiplier and there we can just brighten up artificially our sky or darken it artificially for probably artistic reasons and so on. I think most likely the best way is to leave it at one by default and then just adjust your camera to fit the exposure to the brightness here of your scene. And then there's the size multiplier here. We also checked this already. So the physically accurate value is a value of one. And then together with the lens effect, it also doesn't appear too small like it does if there is no lens effect because the sun is very, very bright. And you would need to have some kind of glow or something around it to make it look visually right. So one is the physically accurate value, but you could choose to increase the value here for artistic reasons. For example, you could choose some really crazy high value, let's say like 50, and then you can see you can uh, just build some quite big sun. So let's just put something like three here, for example, for now. And then there's this thing here that I want to show is that I have this teapot with this ground plane and this size multiplier also affects the softness here of your shadow. So for example, if I have the size multiplier set to one, you can see the shadow now appears much more harsh. If I have it to something even smaller, it becomes even more harsh. And if I have something much bigger, you can see that the shadow becomes much more soft. So the size multiplier does not only affect like how big your sun looks on the sky model here, but also how soft your shadow will become. So let's just put it back here to three again. And let's check out some of the other important values. So just below the sky model here, you can find this option for ground albedo. At the moment, it's set to this grayish, darkish color. Let's choose something crazy bright and we can see what's the effect. So first of all, it affects our overall tinting of our skies. So some of those very reddish floor tones are scattering back into our sky and we get this kind of purple effect now. And then also from the bounce light, a lot of this color is being bounced back here on our geometry. So that's also something that you need to keep in mind. So for example, if you have a scene that's set up in some like desert environment or something like this, you might want to choose some albedo color that kind of matches your overall environment to get a much more realistic result. And then lastly, there's just these two different values here. So one is this blend angle, and this one just controls the fading here on the horizon. And then the other one is this horizon offset, where we can artificially move our horizon down, for example, if we want to hide our horizon for whatever reason. So that are those values. And then those values down here, effect diffuse, effect specular, and so on, we'll check together with our scene. So let's hide this layer here and then bring back our terrain and our buildings. Now we can see because we choose this ground albedo to be this very saturated yellowish color, it also shows through here on some parts of our mountains, our buildings, because there's some gaps in here in the geometry where this ground albedo will scatter through. So uh, yeah, we can choose to adjust it. I think now it's too saturated. For example, let's choose something a little bit less strong, something like this maybe for instance. And then we have something that just overall fits probably much better to our overall lighting of the scene. And then we can move our sun around in our scene here and just find some light mood that we feel looks kind of nice. So of course, always some sunset, sunset lighting looks kind of nice. So we can choose something, something like this where we still get a little bit of light here on this side. And then we can choose to adjust the diffuse, for example, if we want to increase the amount of contrast in here so we can have a much stronger light coming from our sun and or we can choose to have a little bit less strong light and then overall the scene looks much more diffusely lit and much more dim so it's just artistic choice basically to just find whatever we like in this case i think i prefer this little bit more contrasty value in here let me just move that sun also back from behind the building so we can get some of the reflections here in our ocean. Yeah, and then let's continue fine tuning this kind of scene. So one thing that's missing in our scene at the moment is the feeling of depth. So you can see that the mountains, which are very far back, so this mountain is 
back much further than this mountain right here but it's still in terms of contrast and so on overall looks kind of similar to this one so you don't really have the feeling that this mountain is very far away and that's for some very big environment scene it's very important to have this kind of atmosphere feeling in between so there's an option in v-ray which works really good with the sun and sky system which is this v-ray aerial perspective so you can choose it in here v-ray aerial perspective and that works really well together with the sun and sky system we just need to restart here our rendering and then see the result so once i restart here the rendering we can see that now if we see those mountains that are here further back they have this kind of effect like there is some kind of fog or atmosphere basically in between the only thing is that my scene is not really set up in scale correctly like physically accurate scaling so these values here are always in meters and my scene is way smaller than what it normally should be so we would need to adjust these kind of ranges here and we can choose for example something much smaller so for example 150 and then we can see we get this really strong fog effect here that's happening on our geometry it does not by default affect here our sky and that's also how it should be and then we can choose to not make it all the way 6000 meters in height but in our scene or my scene for example choose some value like four three something like this to make it look more realistic and then we can adjust a bunch of settings here to make it fitting more in this scene so now we have this kind of like white fog color basically here happening which doesn't really match to our scene so i want to have something that's a little bit more like yellowish color to look a little bit like some dust here in the in the scene so maybe something like this and then maybe the light intensity we can also reduce that a little bit to yeah something like this for example and now i think we have a kind of cool effect already that we have i think maybe it can go a little bit further back to not have it so strong and yeah i think now we have a kind of cool effect appearing already that it looks like this kind of moody dusty sunset scene and we can move our sun even even lower for example just here way above the horizon and always this atmosphere scatters our light really really nice if i move it here on the other side for example we get some uh, atmosphere here in between those two mountains to separate them and so on so i think yeah that's very important to use this v-ray aerial perspective for some outdoor environment scene to make it look realistic or to make it look correct in terms of scaling so now i think we're almost done the only thing that's missing a little bit is some clouds in the sky so I like to use a little cheat or a little workaround, which I'm going to show you in a second. But other than that, you could also like render or generate real volumetric clouds and that could look really nice. Probably would also take a lot of time to render, but I will use a cheat in this case, which is I just have this sphere geometry. So there's a huge sphere here around my whole scene. And then on this sphere, I have mapped this shader here, which uses an opacity and uh, hdri here and the color so this picture just looks like this it's from the website hdrihaven.com you can find many many sky textures in there so i just put this texture here and the color and then the same texture here in the alpha or in the opacity and then i would get this kind of effect that yeah i have the clouds here because they're white they're a little bit less transparent and then the rest is becoming more transparent and then like this way you can still have your sun moving around everywhere and you have clouds they don't really react to the light of course but there's some ways that you can make them a little bit react to the light so let me just put this sun down here on the horizon for example so if the sun would be really low on the horizon then you would expect the clouds to be dark so we could then for example just choose here a multiplier of zero and then in this case we even have some like darkish clouds here in the sky which look a little bit like some evening clouds so i mean that's of course a workaround but it's something that renders really fast and yeah in many occasions already works quite good and you don't lose the flexibility of being able to move your sun around freely which you don't really have when you use for example hdri so in the hdri the sun is already baked into the HDRI itself. You can only rotate the HDRI left and right. So that's a little bit of disadvantage of this setup with the HDRI. I mean, you have probably some 
nice clouds and so on already in the sky from the HDI, but you don't really have the flexibility to totally move around your sun to wherever you want to control the shadow softness, to control like how much diffuse contribution the sun gives, how strong the specula is and so on. So in this regard, I think the V-Ray sun and sky system is something really nice and I would recommend to use this for many environment scenes because once you get to know it, it's really quite flexible and then oftentimes much superior than some HDRI lighting. So that concludes this tutorial here. Let me just add this final color adjustment here on top. And then if you like this kind of tutorial, subscribe to this channel. There will be many more tutorials coming out. If you're interested in the scene itself, you can find the scene on my Patreon. You can play around with it by yourself a little bit, experiment different skies, different looks and so on. So check that out if that has any additional value for you. And other than that, I hope you stay safe and see you in the next tutorial. So see you soon and take care.